all of us know someone that we desire for them to know Jesus, we want them to know Jesus, we, we want to believe their claim that they know Jesus, but when you look at, at the person's life, when you hear how they think, when you see their priorities, when you, when you examine the fruit of what comes out of their life, there's a reason to be seriously concerned. This might be your parents, this might be one of your children, this might be a sibling, your brother, your sister, it might be a friend, a co-worker, it might even be the person you're married to. Their profession of faith is not matched by a life of serious, genuine discipleship. I think it's important to remember that the, the, the disciples were first called Christians by the world. It wasn't, it wasn't a, a name they gave to themselves. We're Christians. But in living their lives for Christ, the, the difference between them and their culture and the clear identification of their lives with Christ resulted in them being called Christians. This is what's frightening. We have, we have large groups of people in our culture who have designated themselves Christians. They call themselves Christians, but apart from that self-designation, where is the difference? You, you call yourself a Christian, but, but in reality, what makes you any different from the world around you if we're measuring what you call Christianity by true biblical Christian distinctives? What is there in your life that really speaks of Christ? Sadly, what characterizes many people, people we love, people we're concerned about their soul, what characterizes many people who pro profess to be Christians are worldly philosophies. They think just like the world thinks. Worldly priorities, their priority list looks very much the same as the world around them. Worldly companions, worldly morals, and then you add Jesus. The same ideologies, the same priorities, the same kinds of friends, the same kind of lifestyle, but then we add Jesus and we call that Christianity. 